The genes of you and me We're all made of DNA We're all made of the same chemical DNA We're all made of DNA Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of Discovering New Advances, or DNA, a podcast that keeps you up to date on the world of genetics in an easy-to-understand language. So whether you're a student in middle school or a grandparent, you will easily be able to follow along. I'm Kira, and on this episode, I will give you a background lesson on the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel. The following episodes will either keep you updated on genetic advances in the scientific world or teach more lessons on genetics. So if you're already familiar with Mendel's work with pea plants, you can skip to the following episodes about news on genetic advances happening today and how it is affecting our world. For more information, please visit dnapodcast.com or email info at dnapodcast.com. Again, that's dnapodcast.com. I want to thank Melody Sheep for providing the intro music. As most people know, the monk, Gregor Mendel, is known for his discoveries in genetics, particularly through pea plants. During the time he was doing his research, which was in the 1850s and published in 1866, many other scientists had hypotheses, most of which were wrong, about how traits were passed from parent to child. His work, although published in 1866, was not recognized until the early 1900s. At that point, he had died. As I mentioned earlier, he did his research through pea plants. He discovered that the same principles of heredity apply to humans and animals, so he chose to use the common pea plant to conduct his experiments. Some other reasons he picked the pea plant was because they could easily be grown in large amounts, and their reproduction could be manipulated. Pea plants can self-pollinate because they have both male and female sex structures. Mendel was also able to manually breed them himself. One observation he had was that a pea plant did not have the blend of traits from the two parent pea plants. Instead, it showed one trait over the other. For example, when the parent pea plants had two different colored flowers, one white and one purple, the offspring flowers would either be white or purple, not a mix of the parents' colors. Along with this observation, Mendel found seven easy recognizable traits the pea plants exhibited. One, flower color is either purple or white. Two, flower position is axial or terminal. Three, stem length is short or long. Four, seed shape is round or wrinkled. Five, seed color is yellow or green. Six, pod shape is inflated or constricted. Seven, pod color is yellow or green. In his time, it was believed that the child would show a blend of forms from their parents. He proved this current theory wrong. He discovered that the offspring would inherit each trait by receiving one factor, now known as a gene, from each parent. This trait may not be exhibited, however, it could still be passed on to other generations. In today's day and age, we know this as dominant or recessive genes. Mendel's observations can be explained in two principles. One, the principle of segregation, and two, the principle of independent assortment. The principle of segregation is about the factor I mentioned earlier, which we now refer to as genes. Mendel had it right when he said that the normal body cells have pairs of factors, and that in sex cells, these pairs separate. The factors separate during the process of meiosis to produce gametes. In humans, that would be the sperm cell and egg cell. The same is for chromosomes. Each gamete only gets one out of the pair. The factors, as we know now, are genes, then determine an organism's traits. Again, this is why they are inherited from their parents. Now, the principle of independent assortment is about the alleles, which is a form of a gene at a particular position known as the locus on a chromosome. It is that part of the DNA at that spot. The alleles separate independently of each other when the gametes, examples sperm and egg cell, are formed. Therefore, Mendel thought different traits are inherited independently from each other. This principle of independent assortment is only true if the genes are on different chromosomes. If they're on the same chromosome, then they're indeed linked together. This was the next big discovery in genetics after all of Mendel's work was recognized. Other exceptions Mendel didn't understand was how his principles only applied to organisms with two paired sets of chromosomes, which are called diploids. This is because the organisms produce through sexual reproduction. Living things that produce through asexual reproduction do not apply to his laws. In sexual reproduction, the traits of two organisms are inherited. While in asexual production, there is only one set of traits. That's all I have for Gregor Mandel for today. 
So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to email in at info at dnapodcast.com. Please visit dnapodcast.com for more episodes and this lesson along with others, not only in audio format, but also in written format. There is also a contact form there for easy access to send in feedback about the show or any questions you might have. Or you can email directly at info at dnapodcast.com. So to keep in contact with the show, you can like it on Facebook and follow it on Twitter, both at slash DNA Podcast. Please drop a review on iTunes. It is highly appreciated and the best way to attract subscribers so others like yourself can benefit from the show. You can find all those links I mentioned on the website, dnapodcast.com. Thanks for listening and join me next episode to learn and discover new advances in the world of genetics.